Bar Mills Bud Smiley's Gas Stop. This kit will be the first craftsman structure that I'm going to attempt to build. The thing that attracted me to this kit was the 1930s gas station design. I think that's a classic design and it's just terrific looking. Back in the early 70s when I was a teenager, friends and I would jump in a car on the weekend cruise the county blacktops from small Iowa town to small Iowa town and this style of gas station was was out there you know they were in some of them were still in use some were abandoned some were still in use I'm setting the time frame for my layout from the late 50s to the early 70s so so this style of gas station should fit right in After I retired in 2018, I picked up the model hobby again. During the Arizona summer, it's too hot to work on the classic cars in my garage, so I needed an indoor activity. I started building 135th scale plastic military models, and I learned some techniques doing that. And, you know, there's some different materials building these kits, so I'm sure some of the, some of the things I learned will carry over and I'm also sure that I will have to learn some new techniques as well. The kit is primarily laser cut wood. There's a little sheet of acetate for the window glazing and there's some peel and stick signs but mostly it's wood. The instructions call out that the wood will warp if it's not braced. So I'm cutting basswood strips here to reinforce two of the walls. And the basswood pieces will also provide a gluing surface for the two walls that don't have the basswood reinforcement. I'm holding the camera and chopping my basswood with one hand. It goes a lot quicker when I'm using two hands to cut the wood. I use good old everyday Elmer's white glue to attach the reinforcements to the two walls. I use clamps to make sure I had a really good tight bond. The walls have a simulated clapboard siding, which would have been really common for that type of structure in that time period. I sprayed the four wall sections with rattle can gray primer and whenever possible I painted both sides of whatever piece I was working on just trying to head off any warpage. The four small pieces in the tray are for the corner trim and bar mills suggest you paint those separately so you get a nice clean paint edge. Here I've started gluing the wall pieces together and you'll notice that where the wall sections join there's a gap in the corner and that gap is where the wood pieces for the trim are going to go. Again it's all glued together with Elmer's white glue and I have it clamped to make sure it's nice and tight. I took some yellow and blue acrylic craft paint, mixed the two colors together to create a green I was looking for. And I painted my corner trim pieces with that green paint. I'm measuring the inside width of the structure so I plan to add a period correct scale down image of an interior. I painted the structure with ivory spray paint and then after the paint cured I added my green corner pieces.
The kit came with some styrene windows and doors. Uh, there was very little flashing, so they were really nicely done. And all it took was some sanding where I nipped them out of the sprues and I sanded the nubs off and then and they were ready to paint. I added a floor to the structure using styrene sheet and I just glued the floor in place with some Formula 56 canopy glue. Back in the 90s I did RC airplanes and we used canopy glue to glue on the canopies. I'm ready to paint my windows and I need to get some green paint to match my trim. So I took a little yellow and blue and mixed it together and tried to match that green up as best I could. I used my Badger Patriot 105 airbrush with the fine tip to paint the windows and I mixed up some Tamiya paint to create a concrete gray and I brush painted the floor with the gray color. Here's the interior image I'm going to use for the gas station. It's printed in black and white because I just have a black and white laser printer. It'd be nice to have it in color, but every inkjet printer I've ever owned, you know, I print a few things and then it sits for a while and the nozzles all clog up and ended up just wasting my money on it. So I printed it in black and white and that's just going to have to do. I cut window glass from the acetate sheet and I glued those pieces in place with canopy glue. And I made some blinds for the windows from printer paper. And if you notice right on the bottom of my shades, got a couple little black bars that I printed on with my laser printer. And I attached the shades to the windows with canopy glue. And there you see I got one shade in place. And now I have all the shades in place. I'll show you what it looks like here with the, with the shades at interior. And I have the bathroom windows open. You know, those old gas stations, you know, you know how those bathrooms were. I drilled a hole in the floor of the bathroom because I thought I might want to add some LED lighting and that would give me a place to fish the wires through. The roof is built from cardstock paper and wooden ribs. I glued these pieces together with Elmer's white glue. And I weighted everything down just to make sure it didn't warp. And once the glue had set up for the ribs, I added the top piece. I glued the top on with Elmer's white glue and weighed it down to make sure I had a good bond, everything was nice and flat. I decided not to use the paper roofing that came in the kit and instead I used this fiber medical tape and I cut the tape to 36 inch wide scale strips and then added the strips to the roof and I just butted them together. I added tar seams to the roofing material using Tamiya acrylic paint and a paintbrush. Waited till the tar seams were dry and then I painted the rest of the roof with the same paint, the uh, flat black Tamiya acrylic paint.
I probably could have used a brush to do this and it would have turned out fine, but I ended up using my airbrush. I know it looks a little bit blotchy, but that's okay. We don't mind. There's a little variation in tone. And before it's all said and done, it'll get some weathering powder. I painted the bottom of the roof with flat white. And again, it's a little bit blotchy, but we don't care. No one's going to see it. It just gives a, a uniform color. I painted the roof front and sideboards with the same spray paint I used to paint the walls and once those parts were dry I cut out the stickers and attached those the way I attach the stickers is after cutting them out I checked to see how they'd fit on the piece and then after I had a, a good visual of how they fit, I peeled back one of the corners, stuck that corner down, made sure it was real good and square, and then I peeled the rest of the backing off and just laid it in place. After the stickers were applied, I glued the boards in place on the roof. And I used squares to make sure everything was perpendicular to the roof surface and nice and square at 90 degree angles because the front board and the side boards have to meet up and it needs to look nice and square. I added tar to the edges of the roofing using a micro brush and the same Tamiya black acrylic paint. The next step was to add the trim to the front and side boards of the roof and to paint the trim I just used some inexpensive acrylic craft paint painted it on with a brush the trim has an adhesive backing you need to be real careful of how you put it on you want to get it right the first time because it's the pieces are fragile and if you had to pull them loose you might break them that red trim really adds a lot to the roof. It looks pretty sharp. I've now gotten to the point where I need to start getting the white metal parts ready for paint. And the white metal parts, they weren't the greatest. All of the white metal parts needed work. Some of them needed a lot of work. And some of the parts needed so much work, I just didn't even bother with them. To clean this fuel oil tank up, I ended up having to take a Dremel to it with a little cutter. And, you know, I cleaned it up the best I could. This casting's not the best. Even after filing, sanding, using the Dremel on it, it still has some defects in the top. And I suppose I could have filled those with putty, but, you know, by the time I got to that point with this part, <laughs> I was just done with it. I have all the white metal parts I'm going to use primed, except for the exhaust stack. And most of those were like in a galvanized tin, so I decided just to leave it in its natural metal after sanding. 
started gluing the roof sign together. I varied a little bit from the instructions in that in the corner I added a piece of square stock to give the sides something to glue together with. And like the sideboards on the roof, the graphics, you cut the graphics out and just they had an adhesive backing you just apply to the wood. Here I deviated from the instructions again. I had some warping with the signs and so I glued some of the basswood strips to the back of the signs to get them to straighten out. And then I set the sign in place and I glued it down with Elmer's white glue and I applied the white glue in a fashion that it would look like tar. Once the white glue had dried I painted over it with black acrylic paint again to to give it that tar like appearance. I started building the sign that will be planted on the property and I painted it with the same red craft acrylic paint using a brush and the graphic I chose was probably the one that would fit into the 50s, 60s, 70s best. Most of the graphics are 20s, 30s period. The trim for the sign has an adhesive backing and you just peel the backing off and carefully align it and press it in place. I added a pipe to my fuel oil tank for my furnace and I just used a piece of solder and used some CA and glued it to the tank. Time to paint my coke machine and my gas pumps. I just used some red paint, thinned it down a little bit and sprayed it with my airbrush. I ordered another set of gas pumps from JL Innovative Design. Uh, I felt like these 30s, 40s era gas pumps, I thought, I thought they were a little bit out of scale. They're a little too big. I know these gas pumps were big, but these seems a little bit too big. But then I look at the, the JL Innovative Design pumps, and they're 1970s era pumps, and they look a little bit too small. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I may just keep these bar mills pumps and use those. Bar mills provides you with a graphic on one of the instruction sheet pages that you're supposed to use for the gallons and cost, but it's completely out of scale. So can't use that. So what I did is I printed up my own graphic and then eventually I'll put that in the pump. Again, I mixed up some green paint. Uh, this time to paint the big oil tank.
a peeve I have with this kid is, I don't know, I think Barra Mills tries to get cute, and they laser cut cracks into their concrete in a few places. You know, the stands for this tank is one of those. So I turn those cracks to the inside to try to hide them. And, you know, they're just, they look like fissures and they're huge. And I, I wish they wouldn't do that. The cap to this tank is another one of their white metal parts. And it's another part that needed a lot of work. <laughs> I don't think I ever did get it quite round. But, uh, you know, the tank's got to have a filler, so I had to use it. The tank itself is a resin casting, and the feet for the tank are wood. I have a lot of the detail parts painted now. They look, they look pretty toy-like in this photo, but we'll try to fix them up in a bit. And I have a bunch of the sub-assemblies done, so we're getting pretty close to actually putting it together. I started adding a little bit of weathering to the big tank. And to do that, I just use a small piece of sponge I grab with the tweezers. And I dip it in a little bit of dark brown paint and then blot it off until it's almost dry. And then I just apply the paint to the tank with the sponge. I did exactly the same thing with the fuel oil tank for the furnace. Just blotted on a little bit of dark brown on the top to simulate some rust. I mixed up some light gray paint and I used that same sponge technique and blotted a little bit on the roof posts. Try to make them look like they're a bit weathered. In this image you can see the graphic I made for the gas pumps. And I made four of those with my laser printer and cut those out and uh, applied those to the pumps. Then I moved on to the fence and I started cutting fence posts and fence rails. And I glued all those parts to the fence boards with white glue. I aged the fence posts and the fence rails using a little bit of oil paint mixed with thinner and then I brush that on to the parts and lastly I'll paint my fence with a sponge I'll put a little bit of paint on the paper plate take the sponge dip it in the paint blot it off and then use the sponge to paint the fence it keeps it a little bit irregular like it's a like it's a bit aged and the effect the effects pretty good I used that sponge weathering technique on all of the sub-assemblies. So there's a little bit done to the main structure. There's some done to the edges of the roof, the edges of the sign, the concrete island ends, the posts, the pumps, the coke machine, all of it. I'm going to apply some oil stains, some streaks to the big tank and then to the fuel oil tank and also to the drum and I just use a brush to apply the oil streaks and the spill stains I applied a pin wash to the gas pumps to try to get some of the detail to come up and you can see I've also added my uh, gallons and price pump graphics I have this idea that I'd like to light most of the structures that I put on my layout. So I bought some micro LEDs and I added three of those to the roof. Two of the LEDs will be under the canopy where the gas pumps are and the third will be inside the building. I soldered on some 30 gauge extension leads and then use some heat shrink to cover up the uh, solder joints. I attach the LED leads to a breadboard with some resistors and then connected that to a 12 volt power supply 
and tested the lights out to see how they'd look. I'll probably experiment with resistor values to get the light intensity I want, but really until I get it on the layout, I don't I don't really know where I'm at with that, so that's something to be dealt with later. Once I had the lights tested, I glued the structure to the roof using canopy glue. What I plan to do right now is I'll measure out areas on my layout where I want certain structures and then I'll cut a piece of styrene sheet that's that shape. Then what I'll do is I'll attach my structures to that styrene sheet and essentially build small dioramas and then drop the diorama onto the layout once it's ready. To get an idea what the model would look like in a night scene, I turned off the lights and turned on the station's LEDs. And as I mentioned earlier, once I get everything on the layout, I'll probably experiment with resistor values to get the illumination for the LEDs right. But at first glance, this looks pretty close. My eye just kept being drawn back to the gas pumps. They just seemed out of scale. I recently received some HO scale vehicles and so I put the pumps up against the vehicle just to see what they look like. And I did the same thing with the JL Innovative Design Pumps just to get a visual image of how they looked up against the car. As you can see there's a tremendous difference in height between the pumps. I know they're from different eras but that's a big difference. I did a little bit of research to see how tall those 1930s era pumps should be. And what I came up with is they should be about 7 feet tall. Well, these pumps scale up to be about 9.2 feet tall. So, obviously they are out of scale. So, I'm going to ditch the Bar Mills pumps and I'm going to use the JL Innovative Design Pumps. The JL Innovative Design Pumps scale up to be about 5 feet tall, which is about right. These are 1970 pumps, and you get one premium fuel pump and one regular fuel pump. You get two pieces of copper wire for the hose, and my kit had three nozzles. I'm assuming one nozzle is in case you lose one because they're very small. I bent the copper wire to a shape that I thought looked right and then I glued the copper wire and the small nozzles to the pump I painted the nozzles with a silver paint and painted the hose with a really dark gray paint and the scale of these new pumps just looks better you know when you have a HO scale vehicle up against the pumps it just looks a lot more correct. After changing out the pumps, I thought, well, now maybe the building's out of scale. But what I did is I pulled up an image I took during a Route 66 trip a few years ago of that era gas station and made a little bit of comparison. And it's probably not too far out of scale. Here are a few photos of the model. The model still needs to be weathered with some pigments, but that'll be done after the base is finished. And you can see a few lines scribed on the base there where the, where the driveway will be. But uh, doing all the groundwork will be in a future video. The lighting could be better in these photos, but I have another project on my workbench, so I just took the model out to the train room and took a few pictures. Bar Mills Bud Smiley's Gas Stop. My first craftsman kit. What are my impressions? Well, the kit builds up into a pretty nice representation 
of a 1930s era gas station. I think that architecture is very attractive. So I think the kit itself, the gas station itself, is a pretty good kit. The white metal accessories, those aren't very good. I'll use the Coke machine, the fuel oil tank for the furnace, the furnace exhaust pipe, and I'll use the cast resin oil tank. But those are all the accessories I'll use. Will I buy another Bar Mills kit? Yeah, probably will. Some of their structures are pretty attractive. Uh, I'd like to see the quality for the white metal parts improve. Well, that's it for this one. We'll see this structure again when we do the groundwork on the base.